you got a real problem with diversity. Well, that also feeds into the immigration chapter as well. Um, what's the problem with diversity? Why is that a bad thing? Uh, well, I, I let Professor Robert Putnam speak. Um, this is a Harvard professor of, of sociology, and, and uh, he did a survey back in uh, 2001. Now, some of you may have heard of Robert Putnam. He's a, a very highly respected scholar in his field. He wrote a book called Bowling Alone, Bowling Alone, back in the 90s. And it developed his main idea, which is of social capital. Uh, you know, economists talk about uh, uh, physical capital, which is goods and, and, and money and so on, and uh, intellectual capital. Um, uh, uh, and, and Putnam talks about social capital. Social capital is the value added to a society or to a community of social networks of all kinds. You know, Boy Scout troops and churches and uh, uh, or, uh, carpools, ordinary friendships, every kind of voluntary social network. That's all, that all adds up to social capital. And he says what I think is right, and I think we'd all agree, that social capital is a good thing. It's a good thing for a society to have lots of social capital. And he wrote this book, Bowling Alone, where he lamented the loss of social capital in America over the last quarter of the 20th century. Well, now, after that, in 2000, he, he decided to try to find out why we're losing our social capital. Why are we losing it? What's, what, what's driving that? And he found that one reason we're losing it is our diversity, our increasing diversity. He conducted surveys all over the United States, very big surveys. You know, this is Harvard University, they got a bundle of money. So he had tens of thousands of people in these surveys that he did, trying to find out whether diversity helped or hindered social capital. And he found out to his dismay, because he himself is a liberal, he found out that the more diversity you have, the less social capital you have. The more diversity you have in a community, the less people associate, the less people talk to each other, the less people carpool, the less people join voluntary groups. And that was a very shocking finding for him, as I, I tell the story in my book. Uh, he, he waited six years before publishing his results. He, he disliked his results so much. But fortunately, like me, he's an empiricist and he wants the facts to speak. And at last he did let them speak. Yeah, uh, diversity is not good for you. It's bad for your society. So we have this issue that diversity is not very good for your society, A, and B, that the United States always has been diverse and it can't not be diverse. We should struggle with the diversity with the nation was born with, but we're fools to make it worse. And we're fools to think that it's a positive and to pretend to ourselves that it's a positive. It's an obstacle to be overcome. It's not a positive. It's nothing to say. We can't avoid it, but we shouldn't make it worse. The present territory of the 48 states at the founding was about 62% uh, white European, uh, about 22% Native American, and about 16% African American. The great wave of immigration in the, main, in, the, in the late 19th century, early 20th century, mainly just made America whiter. So that the 19, what have I got, the 1950 census, in the 1950 census, America was essentially 90% white, 10% black, and a rounding error of other. So that's the diversity we had in 1950. I would argue that we could have, we could have coped with that diversity. We could, have, we could have stayed one nation. We could have overcome the problems that we had in 1950 between black and white. We could have overcome them if we had not been such bloody fools as to import tens of millions of even more diverse in other we words should as, long not as, have done as long as the black population stays below a certain amount we can cope uh yes i think that's true yes you know that's very pat buchanan-esque for example isn't it i like pat buchanan he's uh -huh. a good guy right. yeah what's wrong with it
but, I mean, what's the alternative? You, 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 do, do you think that without a, an Anglo, what is it Professor Huntington says, uh, with, without a dominant Anglo-Protestant culture, that we can, we can stay a united nation? I don't think we can. I, I, think, say, I think diversity could break us up. You go in to say a multicultural America will in time become a multi-creedal America with groups with different cultures espousing distinctive political values and principles rooted in their popular cultures. What happened to that Statue of Liberty with a hand held high in the harbor going, give us your tired, your poor, yearning to be free? Well, uh, please, the great melting pot, the great mosaic, as David Dinkins once called it. What happened to that? Look around you, Alan, and I, I give the evidence in my book, and uh, uh, Robert, Professor Robert Putnam gives it too. Look around you. This level of diversity is not working. I think my, my private guess is that a nation probably can't hold itself together indefinitely without a majority culture of less than about 85%. I think about 10, 15% is as much diversity as a nation can handle. And I think if you look around the world, and if you look at the examples from all around the world that I give in my book, I think they bear that out. Diversity is not good for you. It's bad for your society. It's sad, but it's true. And if it's true, I want to say it.